I'm Shelly Kurth, and I'm here with my colleague, Dr. Nicola Sisi, to talk to you about how to stay sane in these unprecedented times of parenting. We're glad you're with us today. Absolutely. Now, you know that Shelly and I have been educators for many, many years, and over these past few months during COVID, we've also been homeschooling parents. So what we're trying to do is share our lessons learned, uh, both as educators and parents, uh, to make sure that you have some additional tools to support your kiddos at home. Now, today's episode is all about math, which uh, some of you are a little intimidated by, but let me tell you, math actually is easier in some ways than reading, writing, and some of the other things we've talked about. Let us prove to you just why that is. So with math, a really easy thing to start with that families sometimes forget it's just simple math facts, getting that fluency in math, right? Getting it at the, your, the tip of your fingers uh, is so critical. Now you can do that through some math worksheets. We'll put some links where you can find those or some different practice apps. Again, we'll provide you with some resources, but just getting your kid to sort of rapidly get used to their facts. You know, four, four times four, six times seven, uh, adding things together for younger kids even, one plus three, uh, thinking about math and getting that math fluency is really, really important. Now, there's also mathematical thinking that happens in more places than you might guess. We love to do mathematical thinking with games. Now, that is games anything from checkers to Monopoly, Yahtzee, just getting in the habit and uh, thinking about patterns, pattern recognition, that's math, shapes, that's math. Uh, obviously adding is math and there are so, so many games out there. Uh, you can find a list of them in the family playbook on our website. But again, think about how to have some fun with math. Uh, you can also design stories with math. So my son actually has a whole book that I'll show you right here that we read that has math stories. So stories about math is great. When many of us were in school, we called those word problems, but you can create your own stories of what happens to the number five when it goes to adventures and meets the number three. Uh, some really great videos out there too with that. So think about those things. Also think about how you can model using math. Now, this isn't always my favorite because it feels like work sometimes. But you know, when you're cooking, when you're measuring things, when you're seeing things at the store, you know, how much of this do we buy? How much does it cost? Uh, you know, if we divide this pizza between all the family members, how many pieces are left? Uh, doing some fractions, find ways to to find math and see math. Uh, and for your older students, you know, why not help them balance your books or think about compounded interest? Uh, there's a lot to learn as you do some financial planning. So find the math in everyday life, play some games with math, and uh, just get in the habit of, of looking at numbers and looking for numbers. What else can families do, Shelly? Well, I was giggling a little bit while you were talking about um, cooking and finding math in everyday life because there's a little part of me that cringes when you say that because I just want to get dinner made. Um, and it makes it so much more complicated and takes so much torque time to have to teach all of that. So I also want to say it's okay, parents. Sometimes you just might want to get dinner made. I think that the important piece of that is connecting the idea that cooking uses math or that those things that you're doing in everyday life are using your math skills. You want we want our kids to see math in the world around them and that to see themselves as mathematicians. Um, and I think our attitudes toward it shows so much. Um, I would have said at one point that I wasn't a math person, but I try very hard to stop that language from coming out of my mouth now because I want my daughter and my son to see themselves as math people. And I want to encourage them to look at the world through a mathematician's eyes. So instead of putting my own worries and anxieties about math into the, to the air or into the household, 
I instead point out all the ways in which I am a mathematician and I am good at math and I do embrace math. So remember that it's so important to model for your kids the way you want them to see themselves. The other thing that I think is important is to let your kids use tools to do math, whether it's drawing a picture or counting pennies or using paper clips to do addition. These are all good things. Um, even when your older kids using calculators or maybe smartphones now to see if they get their answers right, that's part of it. So let them use tools to do math. We all as adults use tools to do math in different forms. It builds our number sense. Um, it builds our ability um, to do math and to feel confident in math. So open up the toolbox and probably my uh, most uh, my last bit of advice would be to embrace mistakes. It's okay. You know, in fact, we learn more from our mistakes than from getting it right. So it's frustrating. Your kids are going to be frustrated with math sometimes. You're going to be frustrated not knowing exactly what the teacher needs or exactly how to solve the problem. That's all right. You're going to make mistakes. Embrace them and learn from them right alongside your kiddo. Um, it'll make them have more confidence too and be okay with making a mistake, which is one of the things we want for our kids, right? Math can be fun, Shelly, right? I mean, uh, I, I've got a good math joke for you. Check this one out. Uh, what does What is a math teacher's favorite tree? What? A geometry. <laughs> we better end the show right here. Right here for more tips and tricks. Uh, check out the family playbook at thriveps.org. Have a great day and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.